Hi, my name is Michelle, and today I'll be discussing the topic of IoT security. So to start, what is IoT? IoT stands for the Internet of Things, which is an infrastructure connecting physical objects to the Internet, typically complete with sensors. This could be a thermostat you control from an app on your phone, or a security system that alerts a business owner when motion is detected on cameras past business hours. The greater idea here is having a set of internet connected objects that can work without human intervention through the use of sensors and pulling data from other information technology. As for my personal interest in the topic, it's new, exciting, and has direct job applications for me. IoT is a newer technology, not in concept, which I'll talk about next, but in practice, so we'll no doubt see more and more of it going forward, and in many ways it's the future. So many household appliances today are sold with internet connected versions to make appliances or camera systems available to control away from home and make life easier. And businesses are taking advantage of the automation that IoT provides for greater consistency, to cut labor expenses and allow employees to focus on their jobs rather than being pulled away to do sometimes menial tasks. Additionally, I actually recently got a new position on my company's IT security team that has a focus on their new IoT initiative. The concept of IoT has been around since at least the 70s, often referred to as embedded internet or pervasive computing, and actually machine-to-machine -machine communication, M2M, which um, sort of laid out the groundwork for IoT was first developed all the way back in 1832. In 1990, a man named John Romkey created what is considered to be the first IoT device, which was a toaster that he connected to a computer with TCP IP and could be turned on and off over the internet. But the actual term Internet of Things came from a man named Kevin Ashton in 1999 when he was working for Procter & Gamble referring to RFID technology at the time. Slowly, the concept of IoT grew, and sometime between 2006 and 2008, the first European IoT conference was held, which says a lot for IoT to be recognized in such a way. Cisco Internet Business Solutions Group determined that IoT was born, however, between 2008 and 2009, when there were more things connected to the internet than people. This is also the time when smartphones and tablets were growing in popularity. And the number of connected devices to people was 8.14 to 1, the first time in history that there were actually more people, or sorry, more <laughs> internet connected devices than people. Around 2010 is when IoT started to really take off with news of Google's Street View service storing people's Wi-Fi network data and China announcing IoT as a priority in their five-year plan. The following years after that, market research companies, tech businesses, and tech-focused tech magazines, including Forbes and Wired, started talking about the technology and using the term IoT to describe it. In 2013-2014, IoT devices started using sensors, which are heavily used today. And in 2017, the number of IoT devices saw a huge increase, reaching 8.4 billion. And that number is projected to continue to increase going forward. Now, you may have noticed that what I've talked about so far is the history of IoT as a whole and not necessarily the security of IoT. And that's because IoT, as such a new concept in comparison to most other tech we see today, hasn't had much of a security focus until the last handful of years. In 2017, there were two notable security events that were some of the first of their kind taking advantage of IoT devices. The first by some researchers, what we might call ethical hacking today, exploiting an update vulnerability in an SUV, remotely hijacking and controlling the vehicle. The second was not so ethical, where hackers accessed a casino's network through a fish tank thermometer and extracted the business's database. These events showed the world that security needs to be a focus throughout the IoT implementation process and not an afterthought. So where are we today? 
IDC estimates that 41.6 billion connected IoT devices or things will be generating 79.4 zettabytes of data by 2025. This is a quote by Drew Robb with Datamation from just a few months ago. And what this means to us in cybersecurity is that the number of IoT devices with impactful data will grow dramatically over the next few years, as will the vulnerabilities and threats to them. Cybersecurity professionals will need to stay on top and ahead of this growth and be prepared with securing the data these devices generate. Automation is a huge advantage that comes with the use of IoT devices and is one of the biggest impacts that IoT has on humans, especially in a business setting. So it's no surprise this application is growing more and more. IoT devices can report and correct temperatures, monitor product quality in the manufacturing process, and much, much more. A more specific example from my own experience with IoT is the use of IoT soup kettles and grocery store hot bars to report and correct soup temperatures. So this keeps the soups at the appropriate temperature to meet health code requirements without employees having to check the temperature constantly and has a reporting mechanism that acts as a sort of fail safe, notifying the employees that the soup temperature goes out of range in case the temperature correcting mechanism malfunctions. To focus more on IoT security, we have the cybersecurity mesh. Typically, we see that security infrastructure is built around a central point, and then it tries to expand its perimeter to encompass all people and assets within. The mesh, on the other hand, is building cybersecurity perimeters around access points, such as an employee or an IoT device. So in other words, you're building security around endpoints rather than expanding your security to the endpoints. This structure allows for security measures to keep up with rapid IoT development. A rather monumental event happened a year ago on December 4th when the IoT Cybersecurity Act was signed into law, ordering that the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST, create governing documentation for government-used IoT devices. As the NIST is, in many ways, the leading body of technology standards in our country, it can be expected that IoT manufacturing companies may follow suit in abiding by their set standards in the near future. Last current trend here is IoT um, net, or I should say, yeah, network service, network security as a service. So administrators are recognizing the many challenges of securing an IoT ecosystem, which I'll discuss next. But rather than opting out of IoT and all the benefits they provide to a business, they're turning to professionals who understand IoT vulnerabilities and securing IoT endpoints. Now some challenges. Probably the biggest challenge with IoT devices in terms of security is that the vast majority of IoT devices are public facing, for example, through a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connection. So this means that as long as someone cracks the credentials to it, they have access. This drives the need for com complex passwords that are regularly changed if possible and lockdown data, meaning that even if someone can gain a connection to the device or even gain access to the device's interface or command line, all other data cannot be easily accessed from that point. Past that point, network, network segmentation is also essential with properly configured access control lists so that data can't be pulled from the rest of the network and malicious attacks can't be sent through to the rest of the network from the IoT device. IoT devices are also notoriously vulnerable physically. The nature of many of these devices has them placed out in the open, leaving them to be tampered with. Take the early example of the temperature controlling soup kettles, for example. They're right there in the store. Anyone can pretty much get them. With IoT, a company's network vastly expands, so there's generally just a lot more to secure. And as always, when there's more to secure and more to keep track of, the possible attack vectors also increase and security risks overall increase in number. Just as the IoT breaches in 2017 demonstrated, it's really important for information security professionals to work with others in the organization to keep a focus on security throughout any new IoT initiative rather than being an afterthought. As for ethical considerations, 
Many IoT devices, especially within the household, operate using personal data, such as household energy consumption or even sleep or dinner times. So the company owning these devices, say Amazon for their Alexa device, would have that information. And there's debate about whether or not that's ethically sound. Plus, having that data transferred over the internet means that there's potential for someone to eavesdrop and obtain that information. The last ethical challenge or concern that IoT presents is whether the integration of all this smart technology into humans' lives is actually making humans more dumb. Imagine a world where IoT devices detect the weather and forecast and pick out a suitable outfit for you for the day from your wardrobe, and you put a chicken in the oven and only have to turn it on, and the oven determines the temperature the food should be cooked at and notifies you when it's cooked through. How much less critical thinking is the average individual doing throughout their daily lives? Is the convenience worth these effects? There are many arguments against this notion, stating arguments along the lines that these devices are simply introducing a different type of experience and different intelligence along with it, but no one really has definitive answers to this concern yet. Here are some of my references. And thank you very much for listening to my presentation today. I hope you've gained a new perspective on IoT security.